Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. And Happy welcome, Friday. And welcome to the Back Catalog <laughs> Listening Party. My name is Mother Banja, one of your hosts. My name is Anthony Erick, the other host. And today we have joining us all the way from sunny Santa Barbara, California, Tina Shalesky. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, looks like Alan joined the party a little early today. He was ready for his Friday happy hour. Hi, yeah. Alan. Uh, nice. And uh, if you are uh, joining us today on the Back Catalog Listening Party, let us know where you're tuned in from, if you're enjoying a beverage or a snack, as we kick off our weekend together uh, to enjoy a listening party with Tina Shalesky. And um, Tony, uh, what are you enjoying on this Friday afternoon? Well, in honor of our guest's location, I'm enjoying a Sierra Nevada a Hazy Little Thing IPA in my uh, back catalog listening party pint glass. Nice. Looking good. And uh, what about you, Tina? Are you enjoying any kind of beverage? I know it's earlier uh, you know, there. <laughs> it's, it's a little early. I was enjoying some uh, some healthy kombucha. Oh, you know, this. <laughs> nice choice. Uh, very good. I also very much like the uh, the alcoholic version of the kombucha, but uh, I'm it's still the afternoon here, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I understand. And How about you, uh, Ellen? I uh, was so excited for today's show with Tina that I. Uh, normally I go to, you know, like the box of wine that's sitting in the kitchen, whatever it might be. Um, but today I actually opened up a real bottle. Whoa. So a, a, wow. yes. a nice Cabernet. Fancy. Yeah, I know. Real fancy. <laughs> in a real glass and everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're out there enjoying a, a beverage or a snack, like Alan was saying, let us know where you're uh, tuning in from. It looks like our friend Connie's here from Richfield. Hi, Connie. Um, and Alinda from New Haven, Connecticut. Hi, Alinda. So great to have Wonderful. you all here. Um, just a reminder, this is our weekly musical happy hour, and it wouldn't be a happy hour without great conversation. And we're going to be talking with Tina, asking her all about you know the record and the music and everything. But we would love to have your participation, too. So if you're out there, let us know uh, where you're coming from. And any questions and comments you have for Tina, um, just pop them in the comments, and we'll try to get to them throughout the hour. And it looks like our good friend and past guest, Molly Mayer, is joining us from St. Paul. Hi, yes, Molly. Yes, Molly. And uh, AK2 Labs uh, having a Lineys nice. uh, from Wisconsin. That seems appropriate. So uh, what, uh, whatever you have I to do. I miss a cold Liney. Uh, I miss a I cold Liney. Yeah, well, uh, for folks who are not as familiar with your music, Tina, um, maybe we should start with a little bit about your background. Because although you're in California now, uh, your roots are really closer to a Linies. <laughs> yes. So, uh, uh, more, more Linies than Sierra Nevada. So why don't you <laughs> yeah. um, tell us a little bit about a li brief origin story of where you grew up and how you fell into making music? Um, yeah, I primarily grew up in um, the suburbs of uh, Minneapolis, Apple Valley. Go Apple Valley Eagles. Uh, <laughs> and then um, as soon as I possibly could, I hit 18 and uh, moved to Minneapolis and and uh, but I was born in Chicago with most of my siblings, uh, except for my younger brother was born in Indianapolis, Indianapolis. But um, yeah, but and so we have like lots of family still in Chicago. We still, you know, um, went to Chicago quite a bit, but I definitely feel more, you know, Minneapolis, you know, even though I've lived in California now for almost 20, 25 years now, you know, and uh yeah, we still like crazy. to claim you here, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think when I first moved to Minnesota, um, you know, a few decades ago, um, and uh, I was getting to know the local music scene, and I started hosting the Women Folk Radio Show on KFAI, I had more requests for Tina and the B-Sides, which was your mm -hmm. earlier band. Um, and I think you were the most requested band on my radio show. Oh, like oh every gosh. week, they're like... And, and then there was this one guy who called like every week was like, <laughs> Tina and the B-Sides, Tina and the B-Sides. Um, so oh. uh, so like you were kind of my introduction to Minnesota music uh, in a big way. Wow. And um, and uh, so tell us a little bit about um, kind of, yeah, your early days in music and kind of what led up to the recording of this first solo record that we're going to revisit today. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, how lucky was I to be, you know, brought up in the Minneapolis music scene at that time. I mean, the the mid 90s, I mean, the mid 80s going through up until the end of the 90s for me. And it was just such a incredible, inspirational, you know, just hotbed of just 
you know, music. I mean, just music, music, music everywhere. And we would basically, you know, but practice in my mom's basement. And our first gig we got was 40 years ago this year at mm. Seventh Street Entry on November 9th. And uh, we played, we opened up for the Urban Gorillas, who were really big, you know, back then. And so we just gradually just kept going, playing Taco Tuesdays at the Caboose to, you know, one day finally, you know, getting to play First Ave. And that was like, you know, that took um, a good, 10 years of like, you know, you know, just crawling and pushing and singing and getting in vans and just doing everything. And I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, it's just like, um, especially just, like I said, Minneapolis people, they're the only place that there could be a blizzard outside and you can't even like drive or get, but people will show up to a show and drink an ice cold beer when it's, you know, 30 <laughs> below zero. It's like, what, it, what could be better? I mean, it's like, it's, yeah. And, and so it was, did all that. We did the whole fairy tale thing. The band got signed. Um, and then before I wanted the whole thing to become, we started, you know, getting signed wasn't the best experience, I think, for all of us. And we started almost, I felt like we were starting to turn on each other and like blaming each other. And and that's when I thought, I love all these people way too much. I think we should just put the band on hiatus. And that's, then I went on tour with Double Trouble um, for a while and for a summer. And um, they Stevie really Ray wanted Vaughan's me. Band? Yeah. Wow. Stevie Ray Vaughan's band. Um, I played with Chris Layton and, and Tommy Shannon and... Um, I was the, I was one of the lead singers, background singer and rhythm guitar player. And that was an incredible experience. Had a great time doing that. We opened, we toured with Kenny Wayne Shepherd and, and really got exposed to that blues world, you know, and the fans are like, they are, wow. I mean, blues fans are like, man. And uh, they really wanted me to continue on with them, but I just felt like I wanted to do something for myself musically and artistically and to try something without, you know, the B-sides. And that's when Slow Burn came to be. And so they'd ask, Double Trouble asked me to join them. And I just very graciously, I said, I'm so sorry, I've got to do this, I don't know. And I just had this record in me and that's what I wanted to do. And I just moved to California with my girlfriend who I'm still with, my partner. Um, and we've got two kids, it was, uh, yeah, and then it's nine eleven happened like not you know right before that. The, the world was such a uh, interesting you know. I'm being flooded with like back then there was I was in so many crossroads with my life as well with being a new mom, living in California with my partner, and just embarking on a solo musical career. There's a lot of like big you know things happening you know for me at that time. Yeah. Well, um, I'm so excited to uh, hear this record. Uh, and I, I love this album. So I'm really excited that you picked picked it to Aww. talk about today. Uh, this came out in 2005, uh, Slow Burn. And again, your first solo album uh, after putting the Tina and the B-sides on hiatus. And uh, the first track that you picked uh, to feature today is Love Everlasting. Is there anything you want to say about the song before we take a listen? Yeah. So again, this was like talking about the big changes that was happening in the world and just everywhere. And, and I wrote this song um, because Gavin Newsom, I mean, and now it seems so different, but back then same sex marriage was still illegal in this country. And it still is in some places, but he was the first one as the mayor of Santa, of San Francisco to make marriage legalized. And so that was I, it was a, a song about that really it was the, the impact and like he knew that it was going to be overturned he knew that it was not but sometimes you know it takes that one person to do that one thing to make it push forward oh. yeah amen all right well let's give it a listen folks we're kicking off our weekend here on the back catalog listening party with tina shaleski love everlasting Anyone can free the minds of those who live in fear. 
Organ chord. Oh, Love right. Everlasting by, by Tina Shalesky from her 2005 album Slow Burn, which we are revisiting today on the Back Catalog Listening Party with Tina Shalesky joining us live from her home in Santa Barbara, California. Ah, oh, what a great way to kick off today's yeah, show. That felt great. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. Thank really you. Really like soul healing. I yeah, know. I felt oh. like I was at church or something there, uh, you know, <laughs> with, with all that great ba- uh, harmony singing and backup. Oh. Singing. Um, Thank yeah, you. I would I would love to hear about the cast of characters that um, are playing on that song or the whole record, whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, first, like real quick, all of a sudden just came to me quick side story. I was just thinking that sweet, sweet love that part came from like what I always love, like singing with my sister, Laura. She's always right there. Like we do a lot of improv and we used to with the B-sides, especially all the time. And that was one of the things like during the, one of the breakdowns, I think it was like when we would play during Lola, we'd play a uh, piece of my heart and the band would break down. And then I just started singing for whatever reason, sweet, sweet love. And I thought it's kind of cool. Like Laura and I singing that back and forth. I want to put that in a song. So that was part of how that song was written too, mm. from that riff that we kind of came up with live one time. Um, but yeah, so the whole record, I was so lucky. I was, just moved to LA, like I said, and I and I met um, Sheldon Gomberg, who was the producer, and he was a bass player on the record as well. And he's played with um, Ricky Lee Jones, and um, um, oh my gosh, the main guy that he played with. And I'm oh my gosh, my menopausal brain is like, but the <laughs> uh, the man the man that wrote and perform- uh, Werewolves of London, um, Warns of Us. Uh, yeah, thank you. He was his bass player for a very long time as well and produced many like it goes on and on he's a incredible artist producer musician he knew like so many people and so on this record like who's playing pedal steel is greg lees who was um he was part of ray la montaigne's band he was also played with katie lang for many many years an incredible studio touring musician and um on organ was jeff young who played with jackson brown for many years um, and so, and Don Heffington is playing 
drums, the, the amazing Don Heffington, who's, um, you know, he passed away, I think a year or so ago, but um, it, just incredible, incredible musicians that um, made these songs like come to life. It was just, it was like, I was in awe. Like, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us a little bit about the the vocals. Was your sister joining you on that yes. on that track then? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So Laura, I mean, I can never go even though, you know, there's a part of you that's like, I can do this on my own. I want to. and then I'm like, why? I love, you know, I don't care. Like I love her. She's my sister and I love the way she sings and it's like I just trust her. And it's that sibling thing, you know, it's just that um uh instinctive thing that just happens like that we just she knows where I'm going to go and she knows exactly what I want with these songs it's never a struggle and um so Laura sang back up another um backup singer name she was she sings a lot in LA CC White and Lisa Bourne and then Jeff Young the keyboard player also sang some backups which was great but it was mainly Laura yeah mm. Oh, it sounded so good was that tracked uh, live or was that a kind of a multi-track situation it was a multi-tracked, yeah, type of thing. Because like a lot of these guys um, um, that that Sheldon got was they like even like Ben Montench, you know, who plays for Tom Petty, he plays on this record. Wow. I mean, it's it's insane, it's insane. <laughs> and I, I remember I, like he knew um, uh, um, Billy Billy Weston, and he but it was right before he was very very ill at the time and. Um, he couldn't make the flight over, but he was going to for Sheldon. And I'm just like, this is insane. And and that's how I got to play with um, James Burton, who was Elvis Presley's guitar player, who also played on a couple of tracks on this record that all because of Sheldon, who was just knew all these people, which was incredible. I think we have a picture. There he here. is. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. There's James. Yeah. And when James, James asked me, he said, well, Tina, what do you want on these songs? I said, James, whatever Elvis wanted you to play, I want you to play. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Channel that ghost yeah. of Elvis. That's um, right. Also, speaking of the cast of characters that um, recorded on your record, it looks like one of uh, Lisa, who you mentioned as one of the yes. background singers, is joining us yes. today. So <laughs> hi, <Yes>. Lisa. Welcome. <laughs> hi, Lisa. Uh, yes. Really wonderful. Um, and if you have any comments or questions uh, for Tina as we go along today on the Back Catalog Listening Party, feel free to throw them in the comments and we'll get to as many of them as we can. And um, one of the questions I had was you mentioned about talking about that sibling singing, which is so special. And as you said, so instinctual. I You mentioned you had other siblings. Uh, did you all, are, are they musical as well? Did you guys sing a lot at home together? Or is this just something that that, that you and uh, Laura share? Um, well, my, my grandmother, she on my mom's side sang in the Russian opera. And so I guess you could say we kind of got the, it kind of skipped my mom and dad. No <laughs> and then it kind of came up to uh, uh, my sister and I and but my 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 oldest brother, uh, Bobby, he actually like in high school did some sort of singing at Apple Valley High School. And then but it was my brother Eric and I who started like he was there from the beginning with me at the B with the B sides. He played drums. And so it wasn't until so Eric and I had the B sides and then we got a little bit older and then Laura was in college and then I'm like, Laura, come and sing. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. And so uh, because Laura was she was a music major in college and she also sang jazz while she was out there and i just wanted i thought it'd be how great to have like you know my sister as my backup singer if she could you know and it took a little prodding and and you know begging but you know she did and uh just so thankful that she did you know it's it's amazing to be able to sing with her mm, yeah that's so wonderful and um i need more music because um this is just doing it for me today um somehow the universe knew i needed this album uh today how, somehow it knows every friday at, every at friday 4 at 4. Central <laughs> that we all need a little lift uh, a little pick me up that's right that's right um well uh the next track you picked to feature is never new love and i will say there are a lot of love themed songs on this album mm. Um, uh, the good and the hard parts. Um, but uh, it makes sense when you mention that there are all these things happening in your life at the same time, you know, yes. uh, like having a, 
uh, you know, having a kid and uh, you and your partner moving to California and starting a new life and all these things. Um, uh, are these were these songs written because it was your first solo album? Were these songs written at a time together or were they uh, just sort of a, uh, a collection of songs that kind of were um, collecting at the same time <laughs> that you were recording? Yeah, about half of them. Um, well, first, we've got two kids. I don't want to like leave one of them. <laughs> right. we, we've got a daughter, Maya, and our son is Atticus. And yes, it was at the beginning of so many. There's a lot of love songs with it because it was the beginning of, you know, our family, our, our relationship together. And Never Knew Love was, um, that song was, so I, I, so the collection of songs, some of them I started to write. I had little ideas, you know, right after the B-sides. And then through while touring with, you know, Double Trouble and all these things. And then I then when we get when we got when I got close to recording this record, then typical me, I'm a very I uh, I hate it. But I, I I put off things. I'm a, I'm a procrast procrastinator, like in the worst. You know, I've written so many songs while I'm in the studio because I have to finally finish it. And so some of those were of, of those songs. And I cannot remember quite which ones, but I know that Never Knew Love was Pro I wrote that right after the B-sides broke up and I um, musically and I wanted it in the style of Aretha Franklin, just like hoping like hmm. maybe I can know somebody who knows Aretha Franklin because I love um, I love uh, 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 take me to her. Yeah. And I'll always love uh, why can't I? I'm so sorry. My brain is just like um, losing it. If somebody remembers that song that I'm trying to remember. <laughs> but anyway, it's an Aretha Franklin song in that style. And then I lyrically, it was basically a love letter to, my, you know, my girlfriend, Justine, and um, at that time, and just, you know, feeling a, a different kind of love, a new love that I've never felt before type of thing. Mm. All right. Well, we're all going to experience it now. This is Tina Shalesky, <laughs> Never Knew Love, here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Well, I'm going to take my time. To get this thing right Cause I don't wanna hold and hide my love away Like I've done so many times I was so scared To let my heart I just want to give you everything I have, babe Show you how good I can be But love can give you everything Love can make you puppet on a string Love Take it all away. Oh, and because of you, never knew love this way. I can no longer deny what I'm living. Cause for the first time in my life, babe I never needed, never wanted anything more But some like to hide their love away Some take more than they
<laughs> Sorry, that deserved extra applause. That really did. <laughs> Madison chimes in. Damn, Tina, new favorite song. <laughs> I'm with you there, Madison. Yeah, and then Chris, Chris says, awesome. Colette's so good. Brent Fuqua, preach it. Um, yeah, mm. um, and... I have to say, when those, I'm so glad it ended with those strings, that sort of sweetness. Yeah. But, but I love when they first came in. I was like, oh yeah, this. Like even if you hadn't said that Aretha thing, I would mm -hmm. have been like, oh, this feels like a classic. Like the way the strings come in and provide that just warmth uh, throughout the whole track, even when you're getting fiery on the vocals. Um, oh. That, uh, there's just such sweetness to it. It's really nice. <laughs> I was going to oh, ask about you. that too. Like, kind of, you know, I'm one of my just fascinations with with music is how, you know, people can kind of put the elements together in so many different ways. And you know, I always am interested in in how you know this particular arrangement come came to be. You know, are you sitting there thinking, you know, I think I need some strings, or I want to model it after this particular Aretha song, or is it the producer? Are you guys, you know, kind of going back and forth? Um, what, what's your process or what was your process for, for this record and these songs? Um, mine was, yeah, starting off, jumping off with the whole Aretha, that old school type of old school soul song with the with the strings and everything. And and it was so I knew what I wanted. And again, having a, a brilliant producer who knows everyone, Sheldon Gomberg, he just flipped through. His, I said, I want a big string, like an old school strings on this. And he goes, well, let me call my my friend, David um, Bloomberg. And hmm. David Bloomberg is uh, he was an amazing string arranger. He, he's he did CV Wonder Sign Seal and Delivered. He worked with Jackson Five. He worked for he worked wow. many jazz like Milt Jackson's um, stuff. He did. Um, he also did a Barbara Streisand like he hmm. did like everybody back in the day and and this is just sheldon's friend and it's wow and so and i have his um string his his the, the uh the score that he wrote i have it framed and it's in my studio um hanging um because it was such an amazing thing and his when he did this arrangement and his daughter heard it and when she got married she specifically requested this song be her wedding song which is kind of cool <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah yeah amazing yeah oh wow cool. and um so you mentioned uh uh the aretha song and by the way i i think i found the song that was because i was like i know the song you're talking about it's it's do right woman do right man yes thank you oh. thank you <laughs> I, I, I during that. Well, no, I, during the break, I was like, I'm going to find it. Cause it was, it was, uh, um, so I, I it, mainly to, to make myself feel better. Um, but, um, you mentioned Aretha is a big influence. Uh, obviously you've mentioned jazz. Um, were, was this music that you were listening to growing up? Um, or is this, uh, music that kind of shaped you later when you were starting to make your own music? It was sort of my music growing up was mainly um, I was in the David Bowie, Iggy Pop, Velvet Underground, uh, that kind of sound. And then but my sister, when she came back from college, she brought a cassette of Aretha Franklin. And that just opened a whole then a whole side of 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 R&B and then just could not get enough of old R&B. And my mom listened to everything. You know, that's where I got to hear Janis Joplin and the Beatles and the Stones and Barbara Streisand and Chris Christopherson and Joni Mitchell and <laughs> and Luciana Pavarotti and and you know everything in between. So, and I feel like I I had such an amazing uh, exposure to all genres of music. And um, so yeah, so this. This group, this collection of songs was probably just the hodgepodge of mainly my, I was listening to a lot of Lucinda Williams. I'm mean, just, cause I'm remembering back then I was listening to a lot of Lucinda Williams. Um, that was like, so it was really kind of like in the Jayhawks. I was listening to a lot of Jayhawks back then too. And um, so I was really trying to work on that craft of just that sort of uh, Americana singer songwriter type of crafting songs, you know, with, with my uh, love of R and B, you know, and try to express that through vocals and things like that. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of vocals, maybe this just to kind of cap off that statement. Chris was wondering if you had specific vocal inspirations. I think Aretha, we can safely put in the in that category. Anybody else that uh, in in just specifically vocally? I think um, you know I had uh, I loved well I loved you know Elvis's 
you know, he could sound like, you know, on Hound Dog, he sounds that gritty rock and roll style. And then he goes, and then when he does like, you know, something like Suspicious Minds, it's a little bit more soulful, dramatic. And um, and David Bowie reminds me of like, like, like Elvis does, same thing, like where Bowie can do so many different voices and be, and just, I, I, I aspire, I try to be like that, you know, just have some drama, some, um, uh, you know, different characters in my voice. I feel more confident singing like that now when I listen. I mean, there are so many, I was kind of cringing on a few notes. I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> ugh. like I know I could have, I listened to this and I know it's done, but I could sing it so much better now. Um, I I hear the, the, the insecurities and the, and I can tell I'm just limiting my vocal so much because I'm just afraid. And, uh, um, and I, it's funny. So I'm just listening to this and self criticizing, but also just thinking, well, that's where I was back then. So what can I do? You know? Um, yeah. No, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, it sounded amazing, but, um, but I think you're right. I mean, not only does your, your voice and your artistry evolve as, as, as you, as we age, but also uh, the songs kind of take on new yeah. life. And I know before we came on to do the show today, you mentioned that, uh, you know, a bunch of these are songs you still do in your live sets. Um, so yes. um, uh, like, is this one that kind of regularly enters your set? Yes. Like the um, Never Knew Love or or the one we're going to play. Oh, next. either of them. Yeah. Either. Yeah. So I do play, um, uh, I do play he Never Know Love um, as when I can, you know, when I trust the band and my sister's there to help me sing it, <laughs> then I, you know, because it is a big song and it and it needs those nuances of like, you know, and I do play Hardly Tell quite a bit, like mm -hmm. here, um, the the next song that we were going to play. And that was another very, very first song. So it's funny, Never Knew Love and Hardly Tell were like the first songs of the album that were complete and that ones that I wrote for it. Excellent. And we're going to take a listen to Hardly Tell, but I do want to mention, since we were talking about how great this recording sounds, yes. you can buy this album. And I think you, you, you sell physical copies, Tina, of this yes. album. You know, I think I'm out of the CDs. I think okay. it's just available download digitally. Now. Okay, but yeah, you want to get the you want to buy the actual tracks so that you yes. can hear it in the highest res format possible. It sounds so good. Sounds I mean, so good. <laughs> I, I mean, to say, I mean, she's listed off the the who's who on this, and the production is just. It's it's insane. so great. And you want to so hear good. it on headphones with the whole thing. So um, no. go to Tina Shalesky dot com. Uh, you can check out her full catalog. But uh, this album that we are revisiting today on the back catalog listening party, Slow Burn, uh, is up there as well. So you can find it. And uh, definitely you want to get it. I mean, you you all know you've been chiming in the chat about how great it sounds. And it's going <laughs> to sound even better when you get those uh, um high level uh, audio files anyway uh but now we will take a listen to hardly tell um is there anything you want to say about this before we do yeah i always say a little story a lot of people if there's anybody that's out there that's watching this that spend a lot of my shows i mean i talk about this song because it is funny it's it you know it was the very first song i was trying to pay off a very very large tax bill left over from the b-sides when we were you know took a break from the road and i played i drove my jeep up to fargo north dakota played at this one vfw that i thought was going to be like this cool you know kitschy bar like we have in the midwest and and it was full of like shriners and like old people and like i'm like this i should have listened to my dad like i cannot believe that i'm this is where <laughs> my career is you know playing for three people in this kind of depressing bar in fargo i'm like i'm like oh so when i was upstairs in the dressing room i i wrote this song and uh so mm -hmm. at least i and i love fargo so there's nothing against fargo it was just i think a weird bar it was the moose lodge i don't know if it's still there it was a weird bar a weird time and um yeah <laughs> Not a high point in my career, let's just say. <laughs> but, but great fodder for songwriting. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's yes. called pay, paying your dues. And uh, yes. Tina sure has. Um, let's give it a listen. This is Hardly Tell, Tina Shalesky here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. What I know, know it well 
know sometimes you can hardly tell And all these feelings have gone around And all these feelings inside of death Tina Shalesky with Hardly Tell from her 2005 album, Slow Burn, which we are revisiting today on the Back Catalog Listening Party with Tina Shalesky uh, joining us live from Santa Barbara, California. And um, 
Yeah. Oh, sounds, sounds so, so good. good. It sounds so good. Oh, thank I know. You. I saw. I saw. I saw Tony air drumming too I, at that I, last it was, bit. It did not. It did. It, it came out spontaneously. <laughs> like oh. um, somehow uh, the you know that energy of uh, uh, you know if you've ever seen Tina play live, it, it's infectious. It's a. Uh, I was like Ellen. I somebody said, "Hey, you got to check out this band, Tina and the B Sides." And we went to this this great bar, uh, kind of a legendary bar in Minneapolis called the Caboose, and uh, and you were playing in some configuration of of the B Sides, and I I was just absolutely blown away by it was the energy, it, and it was it was you know it kind of re- radiated from you and, and the band, and I'm feeling that same thing here in the studio um, recordings too, and and uh, that's a really special thing to be able to capture that. Mm. Oh, well, thank you. That's a very, very big compliment because I, I struggled, you know, trying so hard to uh, people would always say, like, why? Why don't your records sound like you do live? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. And that I feel like there was definitely some magic that was captured by Sheldon on this on this record. It felt very mature for me at the time. And, and it felt very, you know, like serious, but also freeing, you know, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, you know. Yeah, and I, I, I also see, hear the drama. It's funny, you were talking before about like Elvis and Bowie and, and how they could uh, they could channel that. And it's funny, I felt that in the arrangement of that last song, you know, like oh, there's yeah. lots of different parts. You know, it so- starts with just the acoustic guitar and then it builds and then and then there's the breakdown. And then, I don't know, it just, it felt like it went on a, it took us on a real journey, journey um, that went way beyond that moose lounge or wherever you were playing yeah. in, in Fargo. Lounge, yeah. it, def- it definitely elevated it way above that. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. And we should mention that if you want to see Tina Shalesky perform live, since we've been talking about uh, how great of a performer she is, she, um, uh, Twin Cities fans, Minnesota music fans will be excited because uh, March 1st, which would be a week from today, uh, she'll be yes. doing a big album release show at the Ice House. Um, and even bigger news, today is today. the release day for your new record. What? <laughs> yes. 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 Cheers Yay. to that. Extra yes. applause for that. I love that cover. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, tell us a little bit about this record because it's pretty different from what we're uh, listening to today. Yes, and it's and it's sort of oddly like the, you know looking back the journey of like we were just talking about early my my vocal influences and things and and you know and really I think really really embracing my grandmother's you know influence uh, singing jazz standards is a very one person described it and I think they were really that it was very true it's they're like these those old standard songs are sort of like mini operas you know they're they're these mm-hmm. love tragedies and. And the voice needs to, my part in the band is to really emotionally convey that while holding the melody and, and, um, and the notes, you know, I'm in, so it's like a twofold thing that I love about this, that I get to sing dramatically with these songs and emotionally. And then I get to be just, you know, in jazz, the vocalist is just another instrument in the band. It's not the lead, you know, they're not the lead singer or the, it's just, you're the vocalist in this ensemble and i really enjoy that as well and and singing these songs and singing jazz it 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 sort of brings me back to the early days of doing punk music in the basement because it's like you're so relying on um you know what you're playing off of what everybody else is 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 playing so i i taught myself how to do music and sing music and play music with that kind of instinct through punk music and then being older now and coming back to that sort of playing off of people, but then bringing technique and bringing, um, you know, age and all the other kind of things to it is kind of a very interesting um, process. So I'm kind of excited. I'm I'm excited about this album. I was it's unexpected, but um, I'm I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, we are too. Um, uh, Yeah. If you didn't catch this, this is a departure um, for Tina. She's doing jazz standards. Can you hold that record uh, up again? I I just love that cover. Yes. Um, And what what led you what kind of led you to this uh, to this record? Did it was it just one day you said, I have to do this jazz record. I've always wanted to do it. Or was there kind of an inciting incident? Uh, What really perked it off was right before the pandemic and the the mood of the country shall we say was of not my of not my (laughs) of my elk you can just say uh, it that's fine (laughs) (laughs) the trump years were a very dark time for me and just politically and everything that was happening in this country and 
all of a sudden, like standards and like I, I always listen to to uh, Billie Holiday and um, Frank Sinatra, Nina Simone. They've always been my I just go tos. But there was something about the actual music that I wanted to sing for the very first time because of it was such a complicated music, you know. But yet it's it's so simple in its message, which is just about love. And I just, you know, all the anger and all the hate and all the everything that was been happening that was happening in the country and still sadly is and the world i just wanted to have that sort of simple uh that simple music that simple message of love and then also to almost have blinders on where you're concentrating so hard like i can't scream i have to really think about what i'm singing and so it kind of it just helped me it it kind mm. of became like this cocoon like seeing this these mm. this music and so to make myself feel good i'd dress up in a tuxedo and i'd play every tuesday in santa barbara with a bunch of guys and we'd just sing these standards and then it just kind of kept snowballing from there and um then the pandemic came right before the pandemic i recorded some of these songs and then was listening to them in the pandemic i thought these are actually kind of Maybe we should just build on this. And then, so it was kind of a weird, slow process, but um, we, after two years, we got there and, and here we are, like I'm releasing this record, which I'm just like, what? Fantastic. Oh, well, cheers to that. Um, yeah. Happy release day. Yeah, happy Thank release you. day. You can learn Thank more you. about the record, the release, that buy the album at... Uh, at, at tinashaleski.com we have that uh, in the on the screen here I'll put it in the comments as well um, it's gonna I know it's gonna um, blow you away yeah and and awesome. um, you can check out uh, information about the Minneapolis release show coming up next Friday as well as any other upcoming tour dates and information uh, you can go to tinashaleski.com and um, uh, we have a question to get to from Chris. Uh, but before we do, I just want to have this opportunity to thank our patrons. These are the folks that keep this show going yes. from uh, week to week and for through, this is the 199th episode Ooh. of the Back Catalog. <laughs> yeah. so mile, we're approaching milestone here. <laughs> so, Amazing. Uh, these are the folks. This was our pandemic coping mechanism. Yes. Some people sing <laughs> this jazz. Is our cocoon. <laughs> Some people sing right. jazz. It still, it still is our cocoon. I know. <laughs> it's still what keeps us getting through all the madness in the world. Um, and uh, we want to thank these folks because these are the folks that um, uh, have supported the show from the beginning and also continue to support it, uh, even though there's tons of wonderful things, you, shows and things you can do out in the real outdoors. There's still something valuable about coming together and listening to music uh, from across the, the planet together yeah. and talking about it. So we want to thank Penny, Ann, Alinda, Bevan, Connie, Vaughn, Alan, Chris, Alex, Becky, Peggy, Joe, Jim, Beverly, John, Fred, Tim, Sarah, David, Jocelyn, Matt, Steve, Mark, Homestead, Pick and Parlor, Severin, Lynn, Mary, Many Tracks, Nikki, Joni, David, CJ, Wiley, Stephanie, and maybe you. If you would like to uh, become a patron, and uh, uh, we have a special uh, event coming up for our 200th episode, a special after party. Uh, you get first look at all the guests. If you want to be part of that and you want to get that back catalog listening party pint glass that Tony is sporting today, um, you can get that sent to you as well. So uh, you can become a patron, but mainly... We're just happy you're here with us, enjoying yeah, the party. We sure and are. There, you know, music is is one of those things that brings everybody together and and really helps you um, kind of put things in perspective. And uh, at least for me, it's one of the most hopeful um, art forms. Uh, whether it's singing the blues or singing about love, um, it's the shared human experience, and it's better served uh, together. And that's why I love this every week. I know I know that you're out there and it means so much to us. So thank you. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Well said, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we want to get to this question from one of our Patreon supporters, uh, Chris Jetner. Uh, said, dovetailing on the idea of how you see this album now, can you share how you compare our our feeling about the new album releasing soon? Obviously, you've talked about the new album, but maybe you could say a little bit about Again, looking back on this on this album that we've been revisiting today, um, uh, like, are you like, oh, young Tina, that's sweet, or are you like, wow, this is like better than I remembered? <laughs> what are your feelings that you have when you listen to these songs? You know, it's it's like I said earlier before. I'm I'm. It's very rare that I catch myself going, oh look at me and wow that was great i i'm already every time I'm like why did i go to the second verse like that i, I just <laughs> so i try really hard to sort of appreciate that the moment that i was in i look back at this as like 
yeah, it is a bit of like, ah, oh, look at baby Tina over there <laughs> just embarking in motherhood and, and, you know, the beginnings of her relationship and, and it all does feel very, and I never really thought about it, Tony, until you said, I mean, every song is basically about love, except for Son of a Gun is about George Bush. And that's about, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's two songs about my kids um, on here, Justine. And, uh, and yeah, it's kind of funny. It is, uh, it, for all in all, it seems like it was a very optimistic um, album for the mm. most part. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's certainly doing it for me today, and mm -hmm. we're so excited uh, to have you here uh, shining some light on these songs. And we have time for one more song because the hour has gone real quick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so actually, this song seems appropriate that the last song is Slow Down um, because, you know, if, if we could have slowed time to so that we could have enjoyed many more songs, we would. Um, but is there anything you want to say about this track before you take a listen? Yeah, so this song is, um, I wrote this song about our daughter, Maya. And I also, I co-wrote it with Dan Wilson. It was one of my first major um, uh, writing sessions. Um, our mutual friend, John Fields, who produced It's All Just the Same um, for the B-Sides. He was a good friend of Dan. And um, he said, you need to write with Dan. And I'm like, cool. So he set it up and um, we, we wrote this song together, which was um, pretty cool. So that's like another, you know. Awesome. Cool fact about this song, besides it being about my daughter, Maya. <laughs> yeah. That's great. All right. Well, let's give it a listen. I think this is a great way to uh, to tie up uh, our hour here together with Tina Schleski with Slow Down here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Just stay with me 
Tina Shalesky with oh. Slow Down. Wow. Another clap. <laughs> it's yeah. necessary. Yeah, absolutely oh. necessary today. So good. Uh, that was from Tina Shalesky's 2005 album Slow Burn, which we've been revisiting today with Tina, mm. joining us live from her home in California. And thanks so much for spending this hour plus with us uh, revisiting oh. these songs and, and uh, you know, having to revisit your own own material <laughs> with your current ears and all this stuff it's so special to to get the inside story behind these songs and big thanks to all of you out there for joining us as well and if mm -hmm. you liked it as much as you seem to be liking it in the comments then like it give it the thumbs up on youtube direct more bots to tina shalesky and, <laughs> and then maybe, <laughs> maybe get the fireworks going and, <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> and um and uh <laughs> And also, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do this every Friday at 4 p.m., not with Tina every week, but with other great guest artists. <laughs> and um, and you can subscribe and get notified uh, what's coming up next. And um, mainly just thank you for being here, especially mm -hmm. on your release day. Again, congratulations on your new jazz album out today. Yeah. Thank and, you. Uh, folks can get it at tinashleski.com and they can also check out information about your March 1st release show here in Minneapolis at Ice House and they can pick up this record we've been talking about today. It's all at tinashleski.com and uh, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, so thank you. You guys are the best and I mean there's nothing better than than talking to people that love music. I mean for a person who makes music to talk to people that love music, it is a pure joy. Thank you so much for having me. Wow. Uh, thanks. This was this was this was just what I needed uh, to, uh, to 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 just kind of close out the week and start the weekend. I hope it was for everybody out there as well. Um, uh, Connie says uh, uh, fabulous show. Thanks, and Chris says thanks. Tina, peace and rock on into the next realm. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. <laughs> okay, that's the start of our nice. weekend right there. I love it. I <laughs> love forth. it. <laughs> Go forth into the next realm, everybody, and All have right. a great weekend. Have a great week. We'll see you next week here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.